Order members, would members resume their seat, please? Jim Allister has given notice of an urgent oral question to the Executive Office. I would remind members that if they wish to ask the supplementary question, they should continue to rise in their places. Members who table the question will be called for a supplementary question to begin with. Clerk, please read the question. To ask the First Minister and Deputy First Minister how they propose to restore credibility to the Executive's promotion of the restrictions under the Health Protection Coronavirus Restrictions Regulations Northern Ireland 2020 after the Deputy First Minister's attendance and conduct at the funeral of Bobby Storey on 30th of June 2020. I call the Deputy First Minister. The Executive's message will continue to be based on scientific and medical advice reflected in guidance and in legislation. As we emerge from lockdown, the key to tackling the pandemic will be to enable citizens to make informed choices about resuming their normal lives safely, and I will continue to work with my Executive colleagues to achieve all of that. I call Jim Allister for a supplementary question. Thank you. Uh, the Deputy First Minister only holds office because she took a solemn pledge of office, which created an obligation to support the rule of law unequivocally in word and deed. The law, as far as last Tuesday's funeral was concerned, was unmistakably clear. There only could be attendees from the household and the close family of the deceased. The Deputy First Minister then compounded that breach by arrogantly declaring that she would never apologise for attending the funeral of a friend. Yet the law that she made, the law to which she said to every citizen there was no exemption, was that you could not attend the funerals of your friend. Could the member come to this Why question? does she think she's above the law? Is it because she has a higher loyalty to the Republican movement? And firstly, can I say that I take very seriously indeed my responsibilities as a public office holder and as Deputy First Minister and as Joint um, Head of Government. A lot has been said um, over the course of the past week um, in relation to or since the untimely death of Bobby Story and also obviously my attendance at his funeral in Belfast. And there's been an unfortunate considerable controversy over my decision to attend at the funeral. As a member of this Legislative Assembly, I have taken the opportunity to set out my position at the Scrutiny Committee last week, the Executive Committee and the Party Leaders Forum on Friday past. I have set out my position in the media and today I welcome the opportunity to do so again in this House. Always at the forefront of my mind are all of the families who are grieving and all those that have lost loved ones throughout the course of the COVID-19 pandemic. I have listened very carefully to the voices of all those that have lost loved ones, and all grief is the same. I am particularly concerned that grieving families who have lost a loved one during the pandemic had their heartache compounded by the necessary restrictions that were in place at that time over the past number of months. Not being able to have their family and their friends to support them and help them through the morning and their grief was a hugely difficult time for all. I'm also concerned that those grieving families are experiencing more hurt this week. Given, given, given that I would never set out to combine anyone's grief, I am sorry for that. I call Jonathan Buckley. I want to acknowledge the huge degree of anger and frustration there is there among the many families that buried loved ones in accordance with the regulations put forward by the executive ministers, including the deputy first minister. But what makes Bobby Story's funeral any different? And Sinn Féin members believe that they're above the law the DFM's insensitive and crass approach to this matter has left many asking the question, and I ask it here now. Does the Deputy First Minister enjoy hurting people? Does she believe she's in breach of the ministerial code? Because these are the questions which people are rightly asking today. As I said, um, and like I said to the member again, I take my responsibilities very seriously as joint head of government, as a public figure, as a public office holder, and I can absolutely say again, I would never set out to compound any family's grief. And I would encourage members not to play on that. I would never intentionally hurt anyone. 
The past four months has been a hugely, hugely difficult time for everybody, but particularly for those loved ones that have lost and buried and had to do that all by themselves because of the restrictions at that time. I would never compound any family's grief, and I've said that I'm sorry for that. I call Colin Gildew. Uh, Minister, is it still your view that the general public want to see this Assembly and our political leaders continue to work together to tackle COVID-19 and to steer the much-needed economic recovery? I can say that we have huge challenges before us and we have really, really important work to do. And I firmly believe that all the parties in this executive are committed to this and to ensuring that we have stable power sharing after three years without functioning government. We have certainly made good progress in all of this, despite all of the difficulties. My commitment is to continue this work. Since the middle of March, the management of, and response to COVID-19 pandemic has been the executive's number one priority. And our objective throughout all of that has been to help keep people safe and to support those who faced real hardship as a result of the pandemic. That's involved a huge effort from all involved, and they've all, and there've been very, very many, our health service, our health and social care workers, teachers, essential retail staff, those providing key local government services, industry and employee representatives and church leaders. People in every sector, public, private, community and voluntary, who, who had to abruptly stop their normal work and normal working practices to join the fight against COVID-19 and to help manage the risks and mitigate the impacts of the pandemic. The progress that's been that has been achieved is entirely due to the support and concerted efforts of everyone. And as a result, we have now reached a key turning point in the management of the crisis where the executive's attention is able to move away from purely controlling the public health response towards planning for economic health and societal recovery instead. We have come a long way in a short time, and it's great that we're now able to carefully reverse our way out of the restrictions. That remains the case now, and it will continue to be the case for the foreseeable future. COVID-19 is still with us, and I will continue to lead us through this and into recovery, and to continue to work with my executive colleagues. I call Colin McGrath. Mr uh, Deputy Speaker, does the Deputy First Minister not accept that it was obvious that the funeral was going to draw huge crowds and that those crowds did gather and that they gathered in an unsafe manner? The use of loudspeakers, marshals and invites all compound, Sinn Féin was aware that there would be crowds. Do you think that this was a breach of the rules? Well, we're legislators and, and we develop the regulations and obviously in terms of the enforcement, that's a matter for the PSNA and we let them do their job and they will... Uh, make their assessment on all of that. It was always going to be the case that Bobby's story, given the huge figure that he was, that there would be thousands of people that would want to go along. So the organisers did try to limit the large crowds expected to attend by providing the online streaming um, for people to be able to watch from the comfort of their own homes and also by placing stewards um, socially distanced along the route of the funeral to ensure that large numbers that were present didn't join the cortege itself. I call Doug Beattie. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Minister, uh, confidence is damaged. Uh, confidence in you, the Deputy First Minister. Confidence in the Executive Office. Confidence in the Executive. As we fight this pandemic, pandemic, a lack of confidence will be terminal. It will cost lives. Therefore, can I ask both the First and the Deputy First Minister if they will set up an independent statutory inquiry to investigate this issue and all MLAs who deliberately breached the guidelines? Um, again, thanks to, to the member. Um, I don't believe that we need a statutory inquiry um, into anything. I believe that there are regulations in place. Those that are in charge with um, enforcing them will do their job, and we should just let them do their job. I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I stand today disappointed more than angry. Um, I was in this chamber, in fact, when the Deputy First Minister um, gave me sympathy. My uncle died during this coronavirus pandemic and we buried him, um, not being able to see him. And indeed, we had his month's mind in the same situation. I would like to go back to the urgent oral question um, to ask if we can get an answer to the question how the First Minister and Deputy First Minister proposed to restore credibility to the executive's promotion of the restrictions under the health protection coronavirus res uh, restrictions. It's important that we bring people with us because having suffered the death of a loved one um, during this terrible period, I don't want anyone else to have it. Um, so I'd just like that, uh, that question answered, please. And, and I would say to you, I, I did 
at the time recognised that you had um, lost, and to anybody who lost anyone during this time, it was um, such a difficult time. Not, I mean, grief in itself is a difficult time for anybody at any given time, but particularly given the circumstances that we had over the course of the pandemic, where at times that it was not possible for people to have that su support network and have to have that comfort um, of having people around them. And that, you know, that's something that's probably going to have a, an impact for, for a long time to come, just in terms of your own um, grieving process. I have said, and I say it again here, I have no reservations in saying that um, if anybody's grief was compounded, I, I would never want that to be the case. That would never be my intention. I have led us through this pandemic. I conti will continue to lead us through this and into our recovery phase, because that's the space that we're now in. Thankfully, for three days in a row now, no one has lost their life to COVID-19. And we're in a space now where we actually can start to think about recovery, to build again to the future, uh, to make sure that we have prosperity. And, and it's, we're in for a very challenging time. That's going to take the collective um, effort from the executive. I will certainly continue to play my role in all of that. Nicole Claire Bailey. Deputy Speaker, um, and I too would like to go back to the question um, and ask of both the First and the Deputy First Minister whether, um, in order to try and gain some confidence back, um, not just with the public, but for this House in general and for everybody in it, do they feel that a Commissioner for Ministerial Standards um, needs to be appointed as a matter of urgency? Um, for all our ministers to be able to have confidence from this House and the wider public. Thank you. Yes, I'm, I'm happy to say that um, we, want to, we need to have the Commissioner in place. It's something that's been um, recruited for, I believe. So I think that last I heard, that person potentially could be in post in August. So yes, that's part and parcel of what we have established here. So we need to have the Commissioner in place. I call Gary Middleton. Uh, it's clear that the Deputy First Minister has broken the funeral guidance that she has helped set. Uh, can the Deputy First Minister confirm whether or not the PSNI has approached her regarding these breaches? And if not, will she, um, will she make herself available to the PSNI? Well, I can confirm that the PSNI have not been in touch with me, and I'm more than happy to cooperate with any um, PSNI officer who may wish to speak to me. I call Gloris Kelly. Deputy Speaker, uh, Minister, uh, Sinn Féin seem to think of themselves as a, an elite party where the rules don't normally apply and have created a hierarchy of people who can uh, flout the rules whenever they so choose. So how exactly are you going to uh, prevent people from uh, having that perception and being able to stand in front of a podium telling me and everybody here and everybody outside of here what to do and that the rules don't apply to you? Firstly, can I just say to, um, to all the public listening at home, it's, it's really, really important that they have walked this journey with us and that they need to continue to walk this journey with us, and I will continue to walk with them. I am determined to continue to lead us through this pandemic, just as I have done day and night for the last four months. I will continue to make sure that we do everything we can to protect our public and to lead us into economic recovery, which is where we need to be focusing our efforts right now. Call Steve Aiken. Mr Deputy Speaker, and may I thank the Deputy First Minister for her comments so far. Uh, she's mentioned the word leadership quite a few times. One of the most important things about leadership is the ability to make difficult decisions and actually to abide by the rules and guidelines that are then set. The question I would like to ask the Deputy First Minister, and indeed many people from Sinn Féin, is if there is a regrettable increase in the number of COVID cases coming from the areas of West Belfast or any areas where members of the funeral had attended to. Will the First Minister then, or the Deputy First Minister then consider her position and look to what is really important, which is about restoring trust in government here in Northern Ireland? Well, firstly, can I say, as I've said, I take my responsibilities very seriously. I will continue to lead us through this pandemic, no matter what comes at us in the future. We've come through some very, very difficult days in the past, particularly over the past four months. This has been one of the most trying times that I think any of us in political leadership have ever come through. But I will continue to play my role. I will continue to do everything I can to both protect the public and to lead us into recovery. That's the space that we're in now. I will play my part in all of that. I call Mervyn Storey. Principal Speaker, uh, on the 4th of June, the Deputy First Minister said in relation to Black Lives Matter protest that, and I quote, we have to send a message very clearly that by gathering in such big crowds, we're actually spreading the virus and actually that's killing people. Following on from uh, Mr Aiken's comment, will 
the Deputy First Minister stand over those words uh, that she said on the 4th of June? And secondly, will she clarify, and this is important, uh, will she clarify that the black and whites who uh, followed the cortege party in relation to uh, the funeral of Bobby Story, were they part of the funeral? So firstly, uh, well, maybe in reverse then, the black and whites were um, stewards at the funeral to try and prevent the thousands of people that would have been there as part of the funeral cortege. Um, and that was a mitigation that obviously was put in um, by the organisers. Secondly, on the issue of um, previous protests, we are making, lifting restrictions here so quickly. I do stand over everything I've ever said, so just to put that on record. We, we have... Um, lifted restrictions so quickly here. We're in a space now where as we reverse our way out, and we've always said this space was going to be much more difficult than going into things because when you're shutting everything down, it's, it's simpler in a way. But where we are now, where we're lifting restrictions and making changes um, and doing it all at breakneck speed, as, as we've said in this house um, on numerous occasions, um, things continually change. So where we were in June and where we are today are two different spaces. Where we were in March and April and May and where we are today is a very different space, thankfully because we're able to lift more restrictions. And I'm glad, and I hope that continues. And I welcome even the fact today that we've been able to agree more restrictions being lifted and allowed for weddings and baptisms. And these are all significantly important things that we've been able um, to do. We still have a wee way to go yet, and we'll just have to work our way through it. I call Matthew Tull. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, would, the first, would the Deputy First Minister agree with me that at the core of the idea of republicanism, whether that's republicanism in Ireland, France, or the United States, is that all citizens are equal before the law. Would you further agree with me that those of us who seek to build a new republic in Ireland have a particular responsibility to demonstrate to those who we seek to persuade and everyone else that we are all equal citizens before the law? Um, can I say to the member that question is not in doubt? I, that is exactly what I believe, that everyone is equal. Call Alan Chambers. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Would the Minister accept that there is a huge and a growing public perception and anger right across the community that her actions and those of others at the funeral breached the regulations and guidance in place to protect the public we serve? I believe that there are people who have lost loved ones throughout this pandemic who um, perhaps are feeling hurt. And I have said that, um, and I said again here today, that I would never compound anybody's grief. And for that, I said that I was sorry. And I would stand over that. And I have spoken with many families who's who have lost loved ones throughout this pandemic. I've supported them through, through the pandemic. I will continue to support um, those families. So I think that we need to be careful and make sure that uh, I'm very happy to to speak to, this, to speak to this chamber, I've spoken, as I said, at the executive, I've spoken in front of the scrutiny committee, I've spoken in the media. I'm more than happy to answer all of these questions, but I, I distinguish between um, families that have lost uh, and their heart, uh, and, and then those charges that are levelled towards me that are about politics, not about the law. I call Christopher Stelford. The answer just demonstrates, Mr Deputy Speaker, that the Deputy First Minister really doesn't get it. She said to us in her comments, that was then and this is now. And I put it to her that what changed was that a senior Republican died. And the rules that everyone else had to abide by went out the window. Does the Deputy First Minister recall saying on the 23rd of May, the role of every member of society is still crucial on the journey towards recovery. The better we all follow the advice and regulations that are in place, the sooner we can come out of this on the other side together. Does she not accept it by her actions? She's completely undermined her credibility. I can say, uh, Lashan Corlia, that I, as I said, I take my responsibilities very seriously. And I think that I am so glad that we're in a space that we are today where so many restrictions have been lifted. Uh, we're doing that on an almost daily basis for weeks and months now. We continue to make progress in that. I, I want to continue to, for us to get back to normal life for people as best as we can and then prepare for 
whatever comes down the, the road at us in the future. For now, our focus has to be still on battling COVID-19. Our focus has to be about building recovery, has to be about building our economy, making sure that there's employment opportunities for our individuals. It's about getting our children back to school. It's about making sure there's sufficient childcare for people to go to work. It's about taking on all of these things and the challenges which we as a collective executive will have to take on. <clears throat> and that concludes this item of business. Item 4 in order paper with the adjournment. The question is that the Assembly deny.